Hello YouTube, this is Corbin22 here, back with another 100 point squadron build for Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. Tonight's build we focus once again on the Imperial Faction. Uh, this is a build I kind of put together at the last, at the last minute. This is, um, I call this one the Wrath of the Baron um, squadron. It's a 5 ship swarm build consisting of 3 TIE fighters, all of them academy pilots, and 2 TIE interceptors, led by, uh, which are piloted by none other than Tur Fenner and Baron Sunterfell himself of uh, Saber Squadron. Now, with this build, I'd say its major strength, I'd say the, the purpose of this build is both the TIE Interceptors are going to be doing most of the heavy heavy duty work, where the TIE Fighters are just going to be their kind of backup. And if you, it's, it's a very simple build, but if you play this build like, you know, correctly, if you play this build properly, then as simple as it may be, you could turn out to be very effective, and a lot of a lot of results could turn in your favor if, again, if you use this build correctly. So, with that out of the way, let's move on to their stats. Like I said, it's a very this is a very simple build, uh, as with most Tie Fighter, as with most um, most builds consisting of Tie Fighters and Interceptors and whatnot. But what it lacks in bulk, it makes up for in efficiency, and I'll show you why. We'll start with the first ship in the build. And he is none other than Baron Sunterfell himself. He has a pilot skill of 9. He flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Interceptor. He has an attack value of 3, an agility value of 3, a hull value of 3, and a shield value of 0. He can take on the Focus, Barrel Roll, Boost, and Evade action. He costs 27 squadron points. And he's able to take on the Elite Pilot Talent skill upgrade. His ability states, when you receive a stress token, you may assign one Focus token to your ship. So the key with Sunter, the key with Sunter Fell is, as counterproductive as it may seem, you want to stress Sunter Fell. You want to stress him out with lots of red maneuvers, because every time you stress him out, he's going to gain a focus for it. Um, and that focus can easily turn, and depending on which uh, action you, and, um, well actually, yeah, you, you're gonna want to stress you, you're gonna want to stress Sunterfell as much as you can. And considering that Sunterfell has lots of green maneuvers, like the tie intercept, like the um the A wing fighter, um, getting rid of that stress isn't that much of a problem. So to start off with his upgrades, I've given him the title card Royal Guard Tie. It is a title card meant only for the tie interceptor, and it states you may equip up to two different modification upgrades instead of one. You cannot equip this card to you if your pilot skill value is 4 or lower. So this means that this card cannot be equipped to any Alpha or Avenger Squadron pilots. It's really only meant for, um, the only really com the only real common pilot you can equip this to is the Royal Guard, the Royal Guard, um, the Royal Guard Squadron itself. Um, other than that, it's meant for, you know, elite pilots like Sunterfell, Turfinner, uh, Tetran Cowell, all those guys. And for zero, for, for zero squadron points, that's pretty good. I mean, normally you're only allowed to take one title and one modification. With the Royal Guard tie, you can take up to two different modifications at once. And for his first, um, his first upgrade, his first modification, I've decided to give him a hull upgrade. It costs three squadron points, and it states, increase your hull value by one. So this ensures that Sinterfell is going to be able to take one extra hit than most other tie interceptors. Which is going to be very handy, because that one extra that one extra hit point is going to make all the difference in you know a straight up dogfight. For a second upgrade, our second modification, I've chosen to give him a targeting computer. It states your action bar gains the lock on action icon. So that means, with the targeting computer, Sunterfell has now access to five different ability at that five different actions. He can focus, barrel roll, evade, boost, and now he can lock on. Which is something not every, which is something, um, not many, uh, none of none of the Tie Fighters or Interceptors can do. The only real ships of the Empire that can do that are the bigger ships like the Shuttle and Slave One, or the uh, Fire Spray Thirty One Patrol Craft, or the Tie Bomber and Tie Interceptor. And with the new wave coming out, with with the new wave that's just been released, the Tie Fan, the uh, Tie Punisher as well. Um. So yeah, with the hull upgrade, he's able to take one extra hit, and with the target computer, he's able to lock onto opponents, which will make, which will better ensure his accuracy. And to take full advantage of Sunter's ability, I've given him push the limit. It's pretty common. This be, this is this I've noticed becoming a very a very um, uh, fam very famous card. Like it's it's becoming it's I've a lot of Tie Fighters or a lot of ships 
that um, have abilities that deal stress or or uh, get get you know, advantages from getting stressed. I've seen a lot of cards ships use push the limit, and here's why. Once per turn, after you perform an action, you may perform one free action shown in your action bar, then receive a stress token. This card plus Sunter's ability go hand in hand with each other. So what this means is, after you move, you perform, you take one action. Say, um, say you perform a boost. Push the limit allows you to take on a second action at the cost of getting a stress. So, say after boost, I want to perform a barrel roll or a lock on or a evade or a focus. And then after he gets stressed, Sunter is able to add another fo add one focus token to his. Um, to his um, uh, um, to his you know his, his token pile. And here's the thing, it's the um, the ability of Sunterfell states that you assign a token to your ship. You don't take the action; you assign him the token. So that means you can take a focus action, and then with push the limit, take another action, and then when you get stressed, you receive another focus on top of the focus you got because you took a focus action first, then you took your other action with push the limit. And then you are assigned a second focus token because of it when you're stressed because of Sunter's ability. Um, so yeah, Sunterfell would I, I I've seen a lot of people use um, this particular build. The modifications can definitely vary, but most often every time I see players play with uh, a Sunterfell, Turfin, or any tie interceptor, uh, or rather any 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 ability that that um, gains a boon from getting stressed they either have the roll guard tie or push and push the limit and then of course the modifications can vary now moving on to the second in command of this build turfenner i'd say he's i would say he is well let me put it this way if sunterfell is the wedge antilles of the empire i'd say turfenner is the i'd say he is the, um, I wouldn't say, uh, not Arvel Kryn, what's his name? Um, he was one of the guys who f test flew with the first A-Wing, and he, uh, he was part, uh, Jake Farrell. I would say, yeah, I would say this guy is the Jake Farrell of the, uh, of the Empire. Um, and here's why. Turfenner has a pilot skill of seven. He also flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Interceptor, and of course, because of the red bands on his TIE Interceptor, he also, he also flies alongside Saber Squadron. Um... He has an attack value of 3, an agility value of 3, a hull value of 3, and a shield value of 0. He can take on the focus, barrel roll, boost, and evade action. He costs 25 squadron points, and he's able to take on an elite pilot skill upgrade. His ability states, after you perform an attack, you may perform a free boost or barrel roll action. So with, with Turfenner, after you perform your attack, you're allowed to take a free boost or barrel roll action. So this is pretty handy if... Um, so this is pretty handy for getting out of tight situations because say one ship is like pretty much right on your tail, like like coming from you from a, from the left flank, and you need to get in. And um, the next turn after Turfender fires, he gets shot upon. With his ability, you shoot not you shoot at your opponent, and you're able to boost out of the way or perform a barrel roll and get and get get out of the opponent's line of fire, which is very handy. So basically, with Turfender, this allows you to take like like with Sunterfell. Uh, it allows you to take two actions in one turn. You move, you take your first action. After you attack, you're allowed to take another boost or barrel roll action on top of that. So, Sunterfell is basically going to be the main assault guy. And Turfenner, he's going to be backing him up. But he'll also have the ability to get out of danger in case he's he's in trouble. Now, for his, his only upgrade card, I've decided to give him Swarm Tactics. And it states, at the start of the combat phase, choose one friendly ship at range 1. Until the end of this phase, treat the chosen ship as if this pilot skill were equal to your pilot skill. So, this is kind of where the tie, the academy pilots come in. With swarm tactics put onto Sunter Fell, um, if any one of these TIE fighters is next to Sunter Fell at at least range 1, swarm tactics enables one of those academy pilots to be the same pilot skill as Turf Fenner, allowing for um, a combined assault. So with Sunterfell, Turfenner, and one of the Academy pilots all firing at the same time, and then the other two Academy pilots coming after, um, it's in in a way it's kind of like the um, the synergy build of Rogue Squadron without the opportunist uh, card. Uh, they don't get additional attack dies for getting stressed, but um, you know actually to be honest, putting um, putting um, um, 
opportunist on Sunju would also be beneficial because he gets stressed and then he'll get that free focus after he attacks. And yeah, that's actually a good idea. Write those down. Write write that one down. People it could be a very um useful uh, variant to this build. Um, so yeah, with Turnerfell with Turfenner, he's able to attack. He's moving, does an action, he attacks, and he's able to do another boost or barrel roll to get out of danger. And with Swarm Tactics, any other any of the tie fight any of the tie uh, academy fight academy um, tie fighter pilots that are within range one of him, uh, one of them will get the same pilot skill as Turfenner, and they'll be able to attack right after Turfenner. And now we come on to the third and the um, third, fourth, and fifth ships of the of this build. The Academy pilots. They have a pilot skill of one. They fly the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Fighter. They have an attack value of two, an agility value of three, a hull value of three, and a shield value of zero. They can take on the focus, barrel roll, and lock on actions. They so sorry, focus, barrel roll, and evade actions, I'm sorry. They cost twelve squadron points, so they're very, very cheap. They're about as they're, I'd say they're actually as cheap as the Z ninety fives, the bandit squadron pilots. And they're unable to take any upgrades on their upgrade bar. And because these are standard pilots, or yeah, because they're standard pilots, they don't get uh, abilities. But you know, what they lack for in abilities and other stuff, they make up for in sheer numbers. And with the academy pilot, you can pretty much, in fact, you could pretty much make a swarm build of like eight or nine academy pilots, and have maybe a couple of them with some modifications, and yeah, you have yourself quite a powerful swarm build. So anyway, um, this is my Wrath of the Baron uh, squadron. Again, it's a swarm build consisting of the five type uh, of five fighters of the Tie series, two interceptors and three fighters. Um, I'd say its advantage is like with the headhunting build that I displayed. It's a swarm build, so the key to this is strength in numbers. Sunterfell is going to be dealing most of the is going to be uh, dishing out most of the damage first because he has the highest pilot skill. Like, and he he's basically the Wedge Antilles of the Empire. I mean, if you if you look back in the lore, Sunterfell and Wedge Antilles do have a bit of a history with each other. Um, his Rolgar tie, uh, tie allows him to take on two different upgrade, uh, modifications. The hull upgrade allows him to take one extra hit, and the target computer allows him to take a lock on, just in case he rolls any blanks and needs to re-roll them. And with Push the Limit, he's able to do two separate actions, gain a stress, and then from that stress, and then benefit from that stress by getting assigned a, uh, a focus token, or assign another one if you took a focus after that. Um, so with this build, it takes full advantage of Sinter's ability, and then... Turner Fair will be backing him up. He will be able to he will be able to move, uh, perform his action, then take an attack, and then after he attacks, is able to um, easily escape danger. And any of these Tie Fighters that are at range one of him will also be able to attack next right after Turfenner because of the swarm tactics that Turfenner has, uh, making one of these tie making these making one of the Academy pilots that are closer to him uh, the same pilot skill and be able to attack right after Turfenner. So it's a bam. It's like it's like it's it's. it's 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 a it's it's mostly with um Turfenner's swarm tactics. It's combined assault with the other two tie with the other two heavy pilots just kind of serving as cannon fodder. Uh, this builds weakness. Um, I'd say its biggest weakness is the fact that again ties are very very fragile ships. I mean the only real ship that the only ship that can take take a fair bit of damage is Sunterfell with a hull upgrade, but Turfenner and the Academy pilots only have a hull value of three. I mean sure they have. They all have the same agility value, which is great. Agility value 3 is quite good to have, and they're able to make sharper turns and uh, X-Wings and Y-Wings and, and B-Wings and whatnot. But, um, yeah, you, with, with, these, with this build, you want to make sure that you keep your enemy in your sights at all times. Don't let them get behind you. Um, with Turfender, might, that might not be so much of a problem because with Turfender, he can, his ability allows him to move out of the way when he, when he attacks. Um, and, um, yeah. That's that's pretty much it um, for the weaknesses. Uh, these guys are meant to take on. These guys are meant to um, deal damage first, deal damage quickly, with whatever other pilots, whatever of the academy pilots that are remaining, serving as cannon fodder. Um, for um, what any, and the enemy ships that come behind them. Um, so yeah, this is my Wrath of the Baron build. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Any constructive criticism is greatly appreciated, as always. Um, if you like, you may use this build in competitive or casual play. Um, you may also tweak it or completely revamp it to your own special your own specifications. Like I said, like for example, like like what I said, giving Sunterfell uh, opportunist instead of push the limit would be another alternative to this build 
because again, Sunter will get stress, get additional attack die, and then from that from that stress he'll he'll gain a focus. And because he's a tie interceptor, getting rid of that stress will be easy because of all his green maneuvers. But yeah, anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is Corbin Twenty Two signing off.